with Lenny Kravitz. And he was doing something with, with Jay, Jay-Z. Uh -huh. And he's, you know, he talked. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, D, I'm going to play this for you. Well, why do you know? The same reason why he want to erase his history with uh, Foxy Brown and giving her syphilis? Because they was underage well, when he did it? I mean, I'm sure he appreciated it. But a 14-year-old girl mentally cannot contend with a 28, 29-year-old man. Period. Period. So it turns out Jay-Z may be in much deeper water than previously thought. It Puff and Jay are one and the same. They can't be. Jay has a family. It seems like Jay-Z might be facing some serious legal trouble soon because Diddy has reportedly told the authorities about Jay-Z's involvement in a T-ring. Jay-Z, however, denies any wrongdoing and is apparently gearing up with a strong legal team to fight the accusations, but he is not finding many allies in the industry. Saw Jay-Z, and he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both f***ed Aaliyah. During a recent raid, the authorities found evidence against Diddy, who then decided to cooperate with them in exchange for a lighter sentence. And it looks like Jay-Z's name was one of the first on his list. A new video of the raid at Sean Diddy Combs' home in Los Angeles from the mother of one of his sons. The, one, that son ended up in handcuffs. Agents also raided Combs' home in Miami. This news might be surprising to some, considering Jay-Z's reputation as a savvy businessman. But there have been rumors for a while about Jay-Z's behind-the-scenes activities, with some claiming he's even more calculated than Diddy. Jaguar Wright has spoken out about Jay-Z's alleged shady dealings, suggesting that exposing Diddy's actions could uncover more about Jay-Z's involvement in similar activities. And there have been past controversies surrounding Jay-Z, such as his relationship with Foxy Brown when she was underage. So there's this story about Jay-Z and some controversial stuff he's been involved in. Back when he was younger, he was supposedly dating a girl named Foxy Brown who was underaged, 15 to be precise. Foxy even got pregnant at one point, but Jay-Z allegedly made her get rid of the baby and paid her a lot of money to keep it quiet. He also sort of ruined her career and cut her off from the music industry. Then there's this guy, Dame Dash, who used to be Jay-Z's friend. When asked about Jay-Z's relationship with Foxy Brown, Dame Dash kind of dodged the question and said people should ask Jay-Z directly. This made some people suspicious. Dame Dash also spilled some tea about Jay-Z and Aaliyah. He said Jay-Z was trying really hard to get Aaliyah to be his girlfriend, but she wasn't interested. There were rumors that Jay-Z even sent her flowers and stuff, but it didn't work out. Later on, Dame Dash said he stopped being friends with Jay-Z because he realized Jay-Z would do anything for power, even if it meant hurting young girls and hanging out with bad people in the music industry. He mentioned how Jay-Z supported R. Kelly, even after he got in trouble for dating Aaliyah when she was too young. There's even a rumor that Aaliyah's tragic death might have been planned by some powerful people. And then there's Beyonce. Some people say Jay-Z manipulated her too. They met when she was a teenager, but Jay-Z waited until she was legal before making any moves. This interview where he admitted it got deleted because it caused a big uproar. But it makes you wonder why Beyonce sticks with Jay-Z even when he cheats on her. Some people think Jay-Z took advantage of her because she didn't have much experience with relationships before him. And then, there is the common pattern of concerning behavior between him and Diddy. In November 2023, singer Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, made some shocking accusations against her ex-partner Sean Diddy Combs. She filed a lawsuit in federal court, claiming that he had been an s during their relationship. Cassie's complaint included some serious allegations. She said Diddy had forced her into S acts with other people and even R'd her at her own home in 2018. Surprisingly, Diddy settled the lawsuit really quickly, just within a day. But the story didn't end there. Since then, three more women and one man have come forward with similar accusations against Diddy. They've accused him of various forms of abuse, like S harassment, R, sharing intimate photos or videos without consent, and even involvement in ST. Things got even more serious on March 25th when federal agents raided Diddy's properties in Miami and Los Angeles as part of a ST investigation based out of New York. Diddy's lawyer, Aaron Dyer, released a statement the next day, defending his client and insisting that Diddy is innocent. Diddy himself has denied all the allegations against him. He's spoken out against what he calls attempts to ruin his reputation and legacy, saying that these are false claims made by people looking for money. 
Now let's focus on Cassie's case. She claimed she was a victim of a long-term pattern of abuse and exploitation, including S.T. Cassie used a New York law called the Adult Survivors Act to file her lawsuit. This law allowed victims to sue their alleged abusers, even if the time limit for filing had passed. Cassie first met Diddy in 2005 when she was 19 and he was 37. According to her lawsuit, Diddy controlled almost every aspect of her life, including her career and personal medical records. She said he was f towards her multiple times a year and often gave her the lawsuit also mentioned disturbing incidents where Diddy allegedly forced Cassie to have Erez with other people while he watched, recorded, and even participated. Cassie stated that she never went to the police because she was afraid Diddy would hurt her even more. She detailed a specific incident in 2018 where Diddy arred her after a dinner, despite her protests. Cassie said she ended the relationship after that and decided to speak out against Diddy's alleged in her lawsuit, Cassie mentioned several witnesses who saw the a happening. One of them was her friend, singer-songwriter Tiffany Red. Tiffany wrote a letter to Combs describing what happened at Cassie's 29th birthday party in 2015. Cassie and Tiffany said that night, Combs and his security team made Cassie leave because he wanted her to have ES with other men. Tiffany said Cassie had told her that Combs was Tiffany wrote, I feel like I have to speak up for Cassie and myself to confirm that everything she said in her complaint about that night matches my experience. Combs' lawyer, Benjamin Braffman, told the New York Times that Combs denied the allegations. He said the lawsuit was full of lies aimed at damaging Combs' reputation and getting money from him. Cassie and Combs settled the lawsuit the day after it was filed, and the details of the settlement are private. Braffman said the settlement doesn't mean Combs admitted to doing anything wrong. Cassie said in a statement that she wanted to resolve the matter peacefully and thanked her family, fans, and lawyers for their support. Combs also made a statement, saying they decided to settle amicably and wishing Cassie and her family the best. After the settlement, four more people came forward with allegations against Diddy. Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23rd, just before the Adult Survivors Act expired. She said she and a friend met Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at a record label event in 1990 or 1991. They went to Hall's place for a party, where Gardner said she was pressured into having S with Combs. She also said Combs A her friend. The encounter left Gardner shocked and traumatized. A few days later, she claims Combs came to her house and attacked her again. In another complaint filed the same day, Joey Dickerson Neal said in 1991, she went on a date with Combs, who she claims and S.A. her after dinner. She said Combs recorded the A and showed the tape to others. Dickerson Neal didn't report the A immediately, but eventually filed a report with authorities in New York and New Jersey. She believes witnesses were afraid to speak out because they feared retaliation from Combs and losing future opportunities in the music industry. A spokesperson for Diddy said that the claims made by the two women are made up and accused them of taking advantage of the Adult Survivors Act. Another woman, known as Jane Doe in the complaint, filed a fourth lawsuit on December 6th. She claimed that Diddy, along with his longtime associate Harv Pierre and another unidentified person, S.A.A. her at Diddy's recording studio in Manhattan back in 2003 when she was just 17 years old. Pierre, who used to work as the president of Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment, is also being sued by a former assistant. The assistant alleges that Pierre used his power as her boss to manipulate, exploit, and S.A. her multiple times between 2016 and 2017. The lawsuit states that the men brought Doe from Detroit to New York City on a private jet, gave her and until she couldn't say no, and then a her violently, even as she begged them to stop. The complaint includes several photos that Doe claims were taken at the studio that night, including one where she is sitting on Diddy's lap. In February, Diddy's former producer and videographer filed a federal lawsuit against him, accusing Diddy of s harassing and him. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who worked with Diddy on his recent album Love and lived with him from September 2022 to November 2023, alleges that he was constantly touched inappropriately by Diddy without consent. In one instance, Jones says he woke up naked, confused in bed with Diddy and two other people. He claims that Diddy the lawsuit also mentions that Diddy's videographer, Jones obtained hours of footage and audio recordings showing Diddy, his staff, and guests involved in serious illegal activities. These activities allegedly include buying hiring S-workers, giving 
drinks to minors, and essay. Jones's lawsuit names several other people as defendants, including Diddy's son Justin, Diddy's chief of staff Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habdemariam. Diddy's lawyer, Sean Holly, denied Jones's allegations, stating that they have evidence proving the claims are false. One lawsuit claims that Diddy geed his accuser to introduce him to his friends and took advantage of his connections in the celebrity world. In another lawsuit, a man named Jones said he felt like Diddy was trying to manipulate him, and his fears came true when actor Cuba Gooding Jr. allegedly a him during an outing on Diddy's yacht. The complaint alleges that Gooding Jr. touched Jones inappropriately, and Jones had to f push him away. An updated version of the lawsuit even names Gooding Jr. as a defendant. The lawsuit also mentions that Diddy's circle of friends enabled his behavior to have access to celebrities he knew and partied with. They claim that Diddy's reputation for throwing the best parties attracted famous athletes, politicians, artists, musicians, and even international figures like Prince Harry, although there are no allegations against Prince Harry himself. Homeland Security raided Diddy's properties, reportedly as part of a ST investigation. Federal agents searched Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami on March 25th. NBC News reported that the warrants were part of an investigation into allegations of STSA and illegal drug and firearm distribution. They've spoken with at least four women and one man, with more interviews to come as part of the investigation. Diddy's lawyer, Aaron Dyer, said that there was excessive force used during the search, but emphasized that Diddy was never detained and cooperated with authorities. He connected the raids to the lawsuits against Diddy, calling it a witch hunt based on baseless accusations. Misa Hilton, Diddy's former partner and mother of his son Justin, criticized the agent's use of force during the raid and said they are looking into it legally. One of Diddy's associates was arrested on the same day at Miami's Opa-Laka Airport. Brendan Paul was charged with possession of suspected and marijuana candy, but the arrest was not related to the raids. Several companies and organizations have cut ties with Diddy. He stepped down temporarily as chairman of Revolt, the media company he founded, and Capital Prep Harlem, a charter school he opened, ended its partnership with him. At least 18 companies have dropped Diddy's e-commerce website Empower Global, and a reality show featuring him has been canceled. Salxco, which managed Diddy as an artist, no longer lists him as a client on its website. During a Los Angeles Lakers basketball game, Game, celebrating LeBron James breaking a record in 2023, a video went viral showing actor Denzel Washington appearing angry and ready to fight someone. Billionaire music mogul Jay-Z stepped in to defuse the situation. The game was significant because James became the NBA's all-time leading scorer. The whole arena celebrated, and the game paused for 10 minutes to mark the occasion. In the midst of the excitement, a video showed Washington seemingly involved in a confrontation. Jay-Z tried to calm him down, but Washington seemed upset, pulling away from Jay-Z's attempts to intervene. Now this is interesting, because Denzel seems to be the absolute opposite of everything Jay stands for. Many people agree that Denzel Washington is an amazing actor, loved by many. He's won two Oscars for his outstanding performances, and some believe he could have won more if the Academy had paid closer attention to his roles in Malcolm X and Fences. He's actually been nominated for an Oscar nine times, making him the most nominated black actor recognized by the Academy. Despite his talent, some were surprised when he was singled out for for praise. While he's known for delivering powerful performances, like in Training Day, where he commanded attention with his swagger, he doesn't fit the typical mold of an actor who grabs all the headlines. The fact that he wasn't an obvious choice for the top spot suggests that, even with his impressive career, he might still be under Part of what makes it hard for people to fully grasp his excellence is that he's one of the rare actors who's both a big movie star and a critically acclaimed performer. People flock to see his movies because he's in them, yet he consistently earns praise for his acting skills. He's not quite like Daniel Day-Lewis or Will Smith, and while he shares similarities with repeat Oscar nominees like Bradley Cooper or Leonardo DiCaprio, he brings his own unique stature and gravitas to the screen. If anyone comes close to matching his status, it might be Meryl Streep. Washington often speaks about his upbringing, including his experiences growing up around friends who faced challenges like incarceration and his parents' divorce when he was a teenager. He credits his father, 
a preacher, and his mother, who owned a beauty shop for shaping his storytelling abilities, honed in barbershops and church. He's known for his hard work and dedication, often playing characters who are down-to-earth and relatable. While he's been in a variety of films, from romantic comedies to westerns, his niche has been solid action movies where he typically portrays the hero. He's a universally loved, religious, Christian hero. Jay-Z and Diddy are not. It is not surprising that Denzel is not on good terms with them, and Denzel isn't the only person who can't stand Jay-Z. Before they started working together, Jay-Z and Nas spent a whole decade locked in a bitter feud that captivated fans. It all kicked off when Jay-Z took a swipe at Nas during a performance at Hot 97 FM's Summer Jam in 2001, basically saying Nas didn't want any with him. Nas didn't take that lying down. He hit back hard on his album Stillmatic, dropping a track called Ether, where he didn't hold back, calling out Jay-Z as fake and even accusing him of stealing lyrics. There was the, the, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay-Z, and then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game. Things got even more heated when Jay-Z claimed he'd hooked up with Carmen Bryan, the mother of Nas's daughter, Destiny, in a freestyle called Supa Ugly in 2001. Jay's mom apparently told him to say sorry, and he did, apologizing to Carmen and any other women he might have offended. But in 2005, the tension finally eased. Jay-Z held a concert called I Declare War, where he surprised everyone by making peace with Nas. They even performed together on stage, showing that the was officially squashed. As for Jay-Z and Robert De Niro, they had a tense moment at Leonardo DiCaprio's birthday bash in 2012. De Niro apparently called out Jay-Z for being disrespectful and ignoring his calls, especially after they'd talked about collaborating for De Niro's Tribeca Film Festival. De Niro didn't mince his words, telling Jay-Z that ignoring someone who's tried to reach out multiple times is just plain rude no matter who you are. One of the most intense celebrity conflicts unfolded when Solange Knowles, Beyonce's sister, physically attacked Jay-Z in an elevator at the Standard Hotel in NYC after a 2014 Met Gala after-party. Surveillance footage captured Solange kicking and swinging at Jay-Z, sparking a viral frenzy. While the exact cause of the altercation remains unclear, witnesses claimed Solange was upset and started yelling after Jay-Z said something inappropriate to Beyoncé and her. Following the incident, the trio released a joint statement taking responsibility for their roles in the altercation and apologizing to each other, emphasizing their commitment to moving forward as a united family. As for Jay-Z's relationship with Drake, despite collaborating on a track in 2009, tensions emerged over the years. Drake's lyrics hinted at a rivalry with Jay-Z, with references to surpassing his idols. Despite occasional disses, Drake denied any animosity on social media, causing confusion among fans. In a 2014 interview, Drake criticized Jay-Z's frequent art references in his lyrics, suggesting he found it tiresome. He also made a playful jab at Jay-Z's luxury lifestyle during a sports interview. Initially, Jay-Z and Cameron had a positive relationship through Rockefeller Records. However, their dynamic shifted when Cameron took sides with his friends over Jay-Z and business conflicts. Cameron later released a scathing diss track accusing Jay-Z of various betrayals, including sabotaging his career opportunities and having involvement in a shooting incident. So it turns out that Jay-Z may have a whole host of big names standing against him if the day of reckoning ever comes. How far away do you think it is? That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.